Today is the mystery box challenge. I love this challenge and I have my mystery box here. I am very nervous to open it up because it came from Courtney who is the creator of this challenge. So I know that there is gonna be something crazy in this box. So let's get started. All right, so now it's time to open up my box. So <laughs> she loves a good challenge. So I'm pretty sure she is gonna put me to the test here. And this time we were tasked with getting stuff from Walmart. It changes every time. Sometimes it's thrifted items. A lot of times it's Dollar Tree, but today it's Walmart stuff. So Walmart is a very large store. So who knows what could be in this box? Let's just see. Okay. So this is challenge item number one. I'm going to set that aside. Challenge item number two. And we were all tasked to send an, an old DIY that we either didn't complete or we weren't happy with how it turned out and we are to remake those items and this is her item twist a project I started and ditch so she started this project it looks like Dollar Tree things she started it and didn't finish it so my job is to finish this off so this is one of our little challenges this time so it looks like she sent me a little treat and a card so let's read that right now Natalie thanks for doing this challenge you always knock it out of the park that's very sweet of you. I try. I try to do the best that I can, that's for sure. Since you took it easy on me last time, I decided to repay the favor. Almost. Oh no. There may or may not be something a little challenging. I know you will handle it like a champ. Can't wait to see what you create. Much love, Courtney. Let's see what we got here. It's an embroidery hoop. I bet we can come up with something fun with this. Okay, so I see a fall theme and that is perfect for this time of year. It's a little pick. Some wood beads, okay. Tea towels, love that. Some more pumpkins. This is kind of some really pretty yarn. I like that. It's got a really cool, interesting design. Okay, she sent me some chalk paint and some craft sticks. Some really cool fall ribbon. That's I love these wood canvases. You can use them this way or you can flip them around and use the backside and kind of use the outside as a frame. Okay, this is interesting. This is a plastic bowl. <laughs> um, yeah. And then a little metal bucket, wood buttons, and some wood rounds. So honestly, she really sent me a lot of really good stuff. This is a very nice box. Thank you, Courtney, <laughs> for being nice to me. All right, challenge item number one. I'm a little nervous. Let me fill it. Oh, what is this? All right, so it is some adhesive gemstones. Okay, honestly, this will be awesome. I can paint over them and maybe treat it kind of like a hobnail trim. I think that this is really solid and I cannot wait to use that on something. Okay, challenge item number two. It's squishy. Okay, here it goes. Oh my word. <laughs> I do not know what I'm gonna do with these, but I'm gonna think on this for a couple of days, my time and only a couple of seconds your time. So for our first Walmart fall DIY decor idea, I wanted to use one of our challenge items right away and that is these sticker strips here, these adhesive gemstones. So I decided to combine these stickers with these wood canvases that she sent me. And I'm also going to couple it with the larger version of these canvases. I'm gonna just reuse this from an old DIY and we are going to make a tiered tray. Now I'm gonna use a wood dowel, you've seen me use this this size of them, then there's a medium size and a large size on my channel. I love them because they're so inexpensive. $2 for this size, $2.18. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take this section right here, go cut it off on my miter saw. If you don't have a miter saw, feel free to use a hand saw. And we are gonna take that section. And then all we're gonna do is kind of create a tear tray using that little spindle. We're gonna 
run a screw up from the bottom and then we're gonna screw it in from the top and then we are gonna just kind of patch and putty that one from the top so you may want to countersink it a little bit down and then we are going to let the putty dry and then I'm gonna just take some scrap wood pieces from my scrap pile just cut off like little one inch squares and we are going to create some little feet for our tear tray I'm just gonna use some wood glue and some finish nails to hold those into place and that's it for the construction of our tear tray. Then we're going to take these gemstones that are our mystery box item and we are going to run them on the entire exterior banding of our tiered tray. I don't think you will need to glue these into place. I think by the time we paint this out then it will be fine. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna take some mineral chalk paint and kind of chalk paint out the entire tiered tray. And then we're gonna let that dry. And then we're gonna go back in with the truffle paint that Courtney sent. We're gonna water down that a little bit and kind of just dry brush that on. And then I take a little damp cloth and kind of blend it out a little bit and let that dry. And then once that's dry, we're gonna go back over with a little white wax. And by the time we're finished, it's gonna have kind of a weathered wood look, which I think is perfect for this fall time. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use this as a cupcake stand. I, lots of treats this time of year. And I bought these cupcakes at the store and then decided to embellish them just a little bit with my edible acorn trick. And you've seen me use this on some cupcakes that I made, I don't know, like a year or two ago, but to kind of zhuzh them up and make them a little fall themed, all you do is you take one Hershey Kiss and a little melted chocolate and we dab that in between and attach it to a little mini nutter butter and then for the top part of the acorn you take a, a little chocolate chip with some melted chocolate and attach that to the top and then you have this really cute edible acorn and then you just put it on top of the frosting and there you have the, a simple easy little treat to display on your cupcake stand and i love how this cupcake stand turned out it's so cute so fall but what do you think of this diy silicone scrubbers i mean they're silicone like what do you honestly do with these So for our next Walmart fall DIY, I'm going to be using the little mini popsicle sticks that she sent me and then these little circle rounds that she sent to me. And what I'm gonna be doing is kind of reminiscent of a cake stand that I did like two falls ago. It was a knockoff of a Magnolia home cake stand. It was really cute. And this we're gonna do kind of on a smaller scale. And we are gonna be making some little mini cupcake stands to kind of go along with our tiered tray. I needed it to be a little bit thicker than how thin these were. So I'm just gonna layer three of them together by squeezing some wood glue glue in between each layer making sure they're really lined up and then we're going to take some little clamps and clamp it into place and let it dry and we're going to do that on three and then three and we will use up our six circles on two. After our wood round dries we are going to take some Gorilla Glue and some hot glue and glue on these little tiny candlesticks that I pick up. I think it's at Hobby Lobby and they come in like four or six in a pack. Super cute, super fun. I've used these a lot and now we have a little pedestal base. Then we're gonna take out our mini little popsicle sticks and we are gonna cut off maybe like a half inch, not very much of um, the ends using one of my favorite tools, which are these miter shears. They cut on like different angles and whatnot, um, but they cut through thin wood super easy. So this is a really handy tool to have around. And then we are going to hot glue on all of these craft sticks all of the way around. Now to kind of just add another little embellishment, we're gonna take some of those gemstone strips that we used on our tiered tray and go around the top edge of that and that will finish it off. 
And then we're gonna just go ahead and repeat the same paint technique as we did with our first project. And then we're gonna paint it out in mineral chalk paint. And then we're gonna let that dry. and then we're gonna go over the top, repeat the same technique we did before, and we do some dry brushing of the truffle chalk paint, and kind of blend that out, and then do some dry brushing of the white wax and kind of blend that out to kind of get that weathered look. I think it's perfect and rustic for this time of year. You could display some more of those cupcakes on these little cupcake stands, or you can put a little decorative pumpkin or something on the top and use it as a decorative stand. But either way, super easy, super cute. I love the look of this. What do you think? All right, next up, we are going to use her project that didn't kind of work out. And these are actually like Dollar Tree things. So if you're looking where you can get them, she picked them up. This is like a Dollar Tree sign that you can probably find in the stores right now. So here's what I came up with to fix it. First off, we need to kind of fill in some of these nail holes. We're gonna sand that down, put a little putty in it, let it dry, and then re-sand it down again. And then what we're gonna do is I had this little wood crate that's been sitting in my stash for a while. I picked it up, I don't remember where, but you can find a, a crate like this a lot of different places. And then what I thought we could do is paint out our pumpkins in a black chalk paint and let that dry and then we're gonna take this crate and kind of stain it out. Whatever color of stain you want. I'm gonna use this Kona gel stain that I use a lot. I really like the way this looks and we're gonna let that fully dry. We're gonna take our black chalkboard pumpkins and we are gonna glue one on either side and then one layered up in the center. And then I just made a stencil on my Cricut machine that says locally grown pumpkin. It's like a pumpkin patch stencil. We're gonna use two layers of white chalk paint and let that fully dry. Pull back the stencil and then we're gonna give the whole thing kind of a good sanding, give it a little rustic feel to it. and then we are going to stack in some cute orange burlap pumpkins that I had on hand that I've used in the past. And a little trick here for you, if you don't wanna fill the whole thing up with pumpkins, it might be a little bit more affordable. You can take something and fill up underneath it. You can use it functionally or decoratively, however you imagine, and it's super cute. How do you think I handled her unfinished project? Did I do okay? Let me know in the comments below. Courtney. We can no longer be friends after this. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. We'll come up with something. Next up, we're gonna be using this plastic cereal bowl that she sent me and this little tin container here and the pumpkins. And then I'm also gonna use her little truffle chalk paint. We are going to deconstruct and remove the rope off of this pot. I lightly sand down where we removed the rope from and then I took some mineral colored chalk paint and do a couple of coats of that on our little white pot and let that dry. Then we're going to take a little bit of black chalk paint and mix it in with some baking soda. And that will just give us something a little heartier and add a little texture to this plastic bowl. I also think that the baking soda will help it stick to the plastic bowl a little better. We are gonna paint the inside and the outside in this paint solution. And then we're gonna only just kind of 
paint a little bit in on this and then we'll leave this bottom portion mostly unpainted and you'll see why in just a second. And then once our bowl is fully dried from the paint, we are gonna take some Gorilla Glue and some Gorilla Hot Glue and glue this tin can to the plastic bowl to create a little pedestal stand. And then we're gonna just fill it with this bag of pumpkins she sent me, and maybe add a little bit of greenery to kind of give it a fun little feel. I am really curious as to how you would have used the cereal bowl. Let me know. All right. For our next Walmart themed fall DIY, we are gonna be using the little embroidery hoop that she sent and this little pumpkin pick that she sent. Now, my idea for this is to kind of take apart the embroidery hoop, take some of that truffle chalk paint that she sent over and create kind of like a stain by adding a little bit of water to it. And then we are going to set that aside to dry. While that's drying, we're gonna take some of this canvas drop cloth and we are simply going to tear like a two and a half inch strip by maybe like 10 to 12 inches. I have a free printable that looks like this. It says, thankful, grateful, blessed. And we are gonna take some graphite paper that looks like this and this printable and we are going to kind of center it just a tad off center. And we are going to put the graphite paper behind our printable, lay it over the top of our canvas strip and use a stylus. And then we are simply going to trace on the lettering, pushing it down with a stylus. And then the graphite paper will transfer that image onto our canvas. This works sometimes and it doesn't work sometimes, but usually on this kind of flat, thin uh, canvas drop cloth, it works just fine. And it did in this case. Then what we're gonna do is we are going to take a bronze Sharpie. Now we're gonna trace over the top of our transferred image using the Sharpie to create like a nice dark um, print. And then we're gonna take our dried embroidery hoop and put our little canvas strip in between the two pieces, kind of center it up and then put our outside hoop over the top of it, kind of holding it into place and then tighten that up. Our pick, which we are going to just hot glue into place. I have a couple of extra leaves that I might also hot glue and tuck into there that were in my stash. And that's it. This has kind of got like a boho feel, but it looks good in any kind of like farmhouse decor. I think it's got a lot of flexibility in this design. I really like how this turned out. I think it's super cute, but what do you think? I mean, seriously, what do you do with this? Next up, we're gonna use the tea towel that she sent to me. She actually sent two, but I'm gonna just use one and we are going to add a little ribbon banding on the bottom of our tea towel. Using some iron-on hem tape to hold the ribbon into place, I just used my Easy Press because I next attempted to use an iron-on decal and for whatever reason, I could not get the stuff to stick down for the life of me. I don't know if there was some kind of weird solution on the tea towel, but it did not work. And this is not my first rodeo, so I don't actually know what happened here, but I could see the outline where it was supposed to be. So I just went ahead and did the same technique I did on the canvas and used the same Sharpie to get my image on there. So if you have any ideas of what went wrong for me, let me know in the comment section below. And here we have a really cute, really easy fall themed tea towel. And you can see that I've displayed it on the end of my kitchen. Super cute, super easy. Love this DIY, but what do you think?
All right, so now what do we have left? We still have the buttons and the yarn and those darn rubber scrubber things. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> so here's what I came up with. This is the ever popular Dollar Tree pumpkin. They always have these in stock. I don't think I've ever seen them out of these. They seem like they have an endless supply of these at the Dollar Tree. And we are gonna use this and I think it's gonna turn out really, really cute. The first thing we're gonna do is kind of pull out this pumpkin stem here and set it aside. We don't need it. We're gonna be doing something a little bit different. This is a hot pen. I've used it a lot on my channel. It's not very expensive, and if you're ever working with styrofoam and you need to cut through it, this is the tool for you. You plug it in, it gets really hot, and then all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hot pen, shove it down in through the middle where the stem would be and out through the bottom, creating like a way for a very long needle. This is like a, an upholstery needle. And we are going to take our yarn and we are going to thread that through our needle. And then we are going to thread it through and give ourselves a lot of excess. And then we're gonna kinda string it up and down, in through the hole, out through the, and go all the way around the pumpkin, completely wrapping the, the yarn all the way through. Now you could, save a lot of time and just kind of wrap the yarn on the outside, kind of overlapping it, um, which is what I ended up doing in the end because I realized very quickly that this was going to use up way too much yarn and I would run out and not have enough to finish my DIY, but I actually do think it would look cuter if you have enough yarn to go all the way through around using the original method. We may need to hot glue some on the bottom here and there if like we run out of yarn, but once we have it fully wrapped, we've got a pretty cute yarn pumpkin. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little wood dowel that we've stained in that truffle stain again and shove that into the center and use that as our little stem. Now about those silicone scrubbers, okay? This is where this is gonna come into play. We are gonna actually take kind of the mushroom colored one and we are going to take one of our maple leaves that I had from our other project and I just am gonna lay that over the top of it and use that as a guide to cut out. Then we are going to use this as our leaf. And then we're gonna take that little um, circular opening, loop it over the top of our wood dowel and put the rubber scrubby leaf into place. And then we're gonna take some of these wood buttons and kind of glue that as a little bit of embellishment. You can also take some jute twine and kind of like make some knots to act as like some vine and kind of embellish it however you like. What do you think of my little silicone scrubber leaf? I think it turned out pretty darn cute. Uh, I did, this one really stretched me and I almost thought this might be the first one that really stumped me, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. And I am just curious if this is what you predicted I would use it for or what you thought, if it met your expectations, if you felt like I did it justice or not. Let me know in the comment section below. I am super thrilled with how this turned out. What do you think? I sent my box to one of my favorite people in the whole world, Yami, the Latina next door. We are real life friends. I just love her to death and I am really excited to see what she does with what I sent her. If you wanna see what I sent to her and what she does with it, I will put a link to her episode in the description box below, as well as a link to the whole playlist so you can check out all of the amazing DIYs one after another. Just binge them all, <laughs> you'll have a blast. And if you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button right there. It's super easy to do. And I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family. And to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to remind you that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.